Okay, it's time to say a few things. Actually, I just wanted to, uh, you know, most of the engineers uh, which are in my contact, they message me and they ask me, why do we even need to go through this sorting algorithm, searching algorithms of graph problems? Like, you know, what's the whole point? We just want to stick to uh, Python scripting or, you know, anything you want to do with the Python. You know, maybe eventually you want to make a GUI or something like, you know, there is a reason why you would want to learn anything, correct? Now, the thing is, uh, I can tell you from my experience, prior to PhD, prior to finish off my PhD, I used to think the same thing, that like, you know, we are not computer science guys, like why do we have to go through searching and sorting algorithms? But uh, trust me, this is not for, specifically just for the job interviews or anything, you know, specific to something that's external. Well, the reason why you would want to learn the sorting algorithms is because I'll show you one thing and then you decide for yourself, okay? Say, for example, if you, if you, if I just make a box, right? And this is two dimensional grid, okay? Yeah, so whatever it is. If I ask you, just print me first five numbers, yeah? You, you're gonna go for a for loop, right? In case if I ask you first row and first column I want to print, then obviously you will need two indices, right? I and J, and then probably you might be going for nested loop, that's okay. But in case if I ask you, print me alternate numbers, yeah? Obviously you'll have to throw in some kind of logic, right? You have to play with indices eventually right so basically what i'm trying to the point i'm trying to get across is sorting algorithms or searching or graph problems they allow you to build your logic in the sense that you know you can play with the indices in case if you don't know how you're going to be making switch and if you're not really sure like you know how or how many times you're going to be making switch in case if i ask you put third element in the first one and keep doing that yeah throughout the uh, two-dimensional uh, two dimensional space so in case if you're not comfortable with playing with the indices there's no way you're going to get too far as far as coding is concerned and obviously you would want to i don't know even a single person who wouldn't want to learn coding or they they say that okay this is the only level which i want to achieve obviously you know the more you get the the better you are it's 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 actually good for your professional life as well as your own satisfaction that you're learning something on day to day, -to -day basis so this is the main reason so searching and sorting algorithms they allow you to think and then they allow you to be so much skilled in movements like you know so whatever you want to for example in case if we talk about the bubble sort right so for example this is your uh this is your list and you want to say like you know you might say okay i know how bubble sorting works that's okay bubble sorting is probably one of the easiest algorithms but that's okay you know bubble sorting but what have you learned through bubble sorting that's the whole point you know the any exercise that we do in life or you know whatever we are doing we have to gain some kind of knowledge which we can apply so you're working logic should be more than what you have learned right so you should be able to apply whatever you have, whatever you have learned so basically <clears throat> what bubble sorting teaches you is first of all the outer loop it allows you to go from one point to another point yeah so in case i ask you how to print numbers so you just like you know apply for i in range length of this thing and just print i okay so that's gonna print out the numbers but what bubble sorting has taught you is what to do with those numbers right so once you do the outer loop right then you pick one value yeah and then inside the if statement for example for, forget about bubble sorting let's let's talk about selection sort it has allowed you to pick a minimum position just try and think you know this is a thought process which you are trying to convey to a code so it's very important to understand this is the outer loop and then after the outer loop has begun, that's when you fix the minimum position and then only you run your internal loop. Now, this might look very trivial, but trust me, it's not. And once you're into your CV scripting or CA scripting or any data science problem, uh, 
you know at times you will have to do this yeah and uh, for example if you are writing your own pandas function for data exploratory analysis or in case if you are writing your own function for i don't know like you know it will you just can't shrug it off you will eventually get to see the results in case if you if you are learning the movements so this is the kind of movement so basically you, your if statement in the bubble sort and in the selection sort it allows you to compare two elements right side by side elements so another uh, sorting algorithm which we'll see we'll have to move for in backward position yeah in the backward direction so that's how this thing allows you to gain grip on the indices because in case if you are not able to play with the indices then it becomes sort of very hard for you to manipulate data and in case if you are not good with manipulation you're not going to get too far even for python scripting or data science or whatever you are trying to do so take these things very seriously and obviously eventually you know this is i know like you know initially 10 to 12 videos they will be hard uh as far as for the beginners especially because it will be all over the place they wouldn't know like you know when to use counter when to switch counters and all that but trust me more you practice it you, you kind of get the hang of it and then eventually you know once we get into interesting stuff then you'll you'll see what i meant and you make sure you you really sharpen your skills as far as movements are concerned so for bubble sort you know the outer loop looks like this in a loop like this in a loop like this yeah so you're comparing the side by side elements and then at every point yeah whenever your condition is met you make a switch okay so this is your bubble sort in nutshell okay this is your bubble sort what about selection sort selection sort same thing you move outer loop you move from one from one element to another so in this way the outer loop and in in the inner loop so you you keep changing the minimum position okay you keep changing the index of the minimum position index you keep changing that and then you keep comparing keep comparing and once you hit any like you know once your logic is true then you make a switch but not there outside the loop so you do understand how to come out and in case if you are making switch inside for example if i was just making switch inside this there's, there's no point of doing selection sort the bubble sort was good enough right so these are the kind of things which you need to you know keep in mind and obviously once we've covered the other bit like you know we'll be doing one more sorting algorithm after that in order to tap on to merge sort or quick sort we have to understand recursion right and in order to understand recursion you have to understand how in this is work otherwise you know you might find myself in a yes of in a trap of infinite looping so we'll see so but just quick word for you guys just just be very careful and be extra diligent towards learning these moments right so they, they will be helpful yeah. thank you